regulator and an air filter, you will, you will be uh, required to provide 80 PSI dry air. I don't want, uh, oil free is definitely what you want to go with. Um, it's nice if you're in a humid environment also, if you have a dryer system to remove, a refrigerated dryer to remove moisture from your compressed air lines because the solenoid valves and the, and the pneumatic cylinders on the machine don't like water in them. Inside the main control panel, uh, you have a main disconnect that requires three-phase power, 230 volt three-phase 60 cycle power. Uh, there is an Allen Bradley programmable process controller, or an Allen Bradley Micrologics 1200, and there is a series of solid state motor starters uh, with overloads to uh, run all of the drives on the machine. On the front of the machine, you have all of your control switches, your disconnect, and the, and the counters for putting water into the bottles. There's also one emergency stop switch that's located uh, on the main panel, and there is a secondary emergency stop switch located at the filler. Also, if you open up the doors to the filling chamber, the machine will stop. It is interlocked for safety. On the back end of the washer is the unload area. Um, this will be uh, more visible when we actually run the machine because the top hood, which is made out of uh, clear Lexan, will be removed. Right now there's paper on protecting many of the Lexan pieces so that they will uh, remain scratch free during the uh, transport of the machine to your location. Uh, the, out the outlet conveyor takes the bottles into the filling and capping unit, which I'm going to show you next. This is the reverse side of the uh, filling and capping unit. The Lexan paper has been removed from uh, part of it so that you can see. There is a uh, manifold uh, that has a temporary water setup hooked up to it. I'll show you more about that in a minute. But there are three fill valves with three flow counters. The, val the bottles come down the conveyor. They will be lifted up off the moving conveyor and go into the filling unit. You will see some vinyl tubing uh, hanging down. That vinyl tubing. That vinyl tubing is for overflow. The bottles will fill up to a volume, but when the bottles are full, there's a tube within inside the, uh, the fill cavity that allows overflow excess water to be uh, overflowed to drain. This allows you to fill bottles up to a common level, no matter what size or style the bottles are. The capper features a fibromatic cap sorter. It has photo eyes that will automatically shut the uh, the capper off. That's a shot of the photo eyes when the, when the cap uh, chute is full. As soon as those caps drop down, the vibrating capper will start up and replenish the cap chute. One thing to note is, first of all, there is a secondary place where you require air for the filling and capping unit, located uh, in, the, in the bottom part of this frame of picture. Also, there's a junction box. I have the cover removed. There's a junction box. We'll get a better view here. One junction box here, and as we pivot over, there's another junction box here. Uh, wiring will be required to reassemble the machine. Everything is labeled, and we will have instructions for you on how to reconnect, but the wires are all labeled, and they will be rewired at the two junction boxes um, to enable the machine to run. Uh, in a minute, we're going to run the machine and show you the machine in operation. One final comment before we, we, we begin. Um, I'm apologizing in, ad, in advance for what you're going to see when the filler fills because this is a manufacturing facility. We are not set up to really fill bottles the way it would be in the field where you have a large volume, low pressure flow. What we have here is exactly the opposite. We have a small tank and we have a very high pressure pump, but it, it was the only uh, way we could that would allow us to run a hose line up to and the uh, manifold on the filler. So when we actually fill the bottles, they're not going to fill at the proper speed and there might not be the proper level in them, but at least you'll get an idea of how the filler works. It will, it will work properly when you provide a constant low pressure, high volume water flow to the system. In a moment, we'll begin running the machine. We are now ready to run the machine. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to turn on the wash pump and the rinse pump, and I'm going to show you some features. You'll see that we have good water pressure. You have some observation windows that you can look in. It's pretty dark, but you can actually 
look in there and see the bottles go through the machine. Another feature, by the way, are these trays. And there's a couple of trays here that you can pull out to, to get to the debris. These are debris trays. There's one for the pre-rinse, I mean the pre-wash, excuse me. And then this is a tray that collects debris from the wash. So any debris that might be in the bottle goes in those trays. And there's an access door and you can pull those trays completely out and uh, dump them to get rid of the debris. Press the uh, start system start button. There's a system start button that must be depressed to activate the machine. Now I'm going to ask my able assistant Steve to load some bottles onto the conveyor. pushes it into the machine and retract, when it retracts. And the, the bottling machine indexes approximately every 16 seconds. It's kind of hard to see what's going on here, but in a minute you'll see the bottles move into the washer. And then I'm going to cut the uh, scene and we're going to go watch the bottles come out the other end. But I'll wait and let you see the water start going into the bottles. There are spray headers top and bottom that wash the bottles both on the top and the bottom. And there are curtains in the machine that prevent the water from spraying out into uh, one section to the other. Shortly the bottles will exit the washer. We have removed the canopy hood uh, so that you can actually see what's happening a little bit better. That shows the lift tray unloader that sets the bottles up right on the conveyor. And in the next sequence, the bottles will come out of the bottle washer. They will head out of the bottle washer to the exit conveyor that goes into the filling and capping unit. The bottles are now traveling to the filling and capping unit. We'll wait for the next cycle. Okay. The bottles will be coming shortly. Okay, we're ready. Go. Turn the filler on with the pump. Here come the bottles. They are lifted up off the conveyor and they will begin filling. Now the fill is going to be very slow because we don't have the proper setup as I had mentioned to you. But the bottles are filling. And they will not fill completely full because um, there's counters on the system that you have to set to fill them to a certain level. And I don't have those set right now because I just want to show you that the filler works. The bottles are full. The bottles go into the capper. Pick up the cap. They all are capped. They move on to the gravity roller conveyor. There is a stop at the end so they don't fall off onto the floor. One thing I neglected to show you are the three bottle counters. These counters can be set to arbitrary values and the value that's placed into that determines how much water goes into the bottle. And those are independently set. And I'm going to show you one more thing over by the filler. Although it's a little bit difficult to see, there are three clear plastic tubes that come from three um, independently controlled fill valves. And you can adjust the fill counters that I showed you on the main control panel so that a very slight amount of water comes out the overflow. That's the ideal setting. That gives you a 5 gallon or 5.5 or 5.2 gallons, whatever you set it to. Again, those numbers are just counts. They're not actual uh, gallon units that are on the counters. But you'll adjust them so that a little bit of water comes out of each hose. Then when the bottles leave the, the fill station, they will all be filled up to a specified level that are equal in every bottle. Also, while the lift station is up filling the bottles, if you have a shortage of water supply, and it takes uh, an inordinate period of time to fill the bottles, there's an interlock that prohibits the bottle washer from indexing any more bottles onto the fill conveyor until the bottles that are currently being filled have finished. This is a safety feature so that bottles